get ready with me while I teach you everything you need to know before you are selecting drapery. The first thing you want to do is you want to choose if you are doing stationary drapes or functional drapes. So meaning are they just going sides of your windows or are you actually using them on the day to day? After you know if you want to use your drapery or not, you're going to decide what kind of lining you're looking for in your drapery. I'm going to assume in this example that everyone is looking for actual functional drapery. There are unlined drapes, privacy line drapes, and black outline drapes. Just think of it as those three categories. And if you want unlined, of course, it could be like a sheer that is going to just like let light through or um, privacy lined is still gonna allow light through, but you get full privacy from the outside and there is a lining. So the look from the outside looking in generally would be, you know, white on the outside. Um, and then blackout, which is pretty self-explanatory. Most people want in baby's rooms and sometimes even their own bedrooms. Most of my clients are either doing blackout drapery or unlined drapery because they're trying to do like a cute wispy something in a common area in their house. And that's what the unlined drape is for. A privacy line drape, I would say, is probably the least common, but maybe if we're doing, you know, like living room, dining room, that kind of thing. The material that your drape is, is going to affect what kind of lining that you choose because things like um, velvet need a blackout lining. So then you need to decide the style of drapery that you want. There are many types of styles of drapery and it depends on where you're purchasing it from um, that you're gonna choose from, but I'll give you guys the overall category. If you're looking at functional drapes, you're looking at ripple fold, which is gonna be like wavy. You're looking at tailored pleat or French pleat. Those are synonyms. And then also pinch pleat drapes. Those are gonna be the most functional. Generally an inverted pleat, which you'll also see is not a functional drape. It's just meant to be stationary. We're gonna talk about hardware. The thing about hardware is if you want a ripple fold, it has to go on a track system. Um, and then if you want a pleat, you can do it on a track system or you can do it on rod and ring. Um, I'm going to avoid doing anything that is a rod pocket or a grommet. Well, one rod pockets are just, honestly, both of them are just not attractive, but they're also not functional and great for day to day. So yes, you can open and close them, but they're not intended to be open and closed. By the way, when I say something isn't intended for that use, it means it somehow is damaging the product, right? So a rod pocket or a grommet, you're gonna lose the pleats and the like style of the drapery by opening and closing it on a daily basis. So now it's time to select your hardware. Are you doing rod and ring or are you doing a track system? You can kind of, um, most people tend to go towards track system when they're doing custom, but if I'm being honest, I'm teaching you guys how to do this on your own on a budget. So more than likely, most people are gonna be going for rod and ring. If you like the rods that go back to the wall like that, that is called a French return. I'll show you guys, I actually am installing them in my bedroom right now. Um, and I'm going for a rod and ring look myself. But yeah, that is how you select your hardware. So you're gonna purchase probably standard length drapes and those are gonna come, you know, like a 96 inch or something like that. Well, once you hang them, you can see how much they need to be hemmed and you can take them to your local tailor who will hem them for, I think, like anywhere from 10 to $25 per pair. I'm planning on getting an estimate on mine today, so I'll let you know. I am going to quickly give you guys a tutorial on um, the material that you select for your drapery. A lot of people who think they want like a designer look or a Studio McGee look think that they want linen. You guys want a linen look, you don't want a linen. Linen naturally grows and shrinks and it also wrinkles like crazy. So you're gonna want a linen look, but not a linen. If you want a real linen, you're gonna wanna black outline it because that lining is gonna give it the stability um, to not grow and shrink as much and not wrinkle as much. Um, you would be shocked that the looks that you like aren't actually real linen. One rule I have for my clients is I absolutely refuse to sell them a silk without a black, black outlining. And the reason for that is that silk is actually a protein. And imagine it like putting a silk in a window without a black outlining is like putting meat in a crock pot and the silk will actually 
tear apart like meat that's been cooking all day in a crock pot. So I won't sell a silk drape without a black outlining. And as I briefly mentioned earlier, velvet needs a black outlining as well. And that's just because it won't sit properly without it. One more fact about the length is there is technically no such thing as kissing the floor. We can try to get as close as possible. And if I am dealing with a newer home with generally even floors, I will have the drapes be one half an inch above the floor with the intention that they'll grow and they'll look like they're kissing the floor. But if you have an older home, you're going to want a slight puddle, half an inch or an inch. No, honestly, like a half an inch of a puddle because your floors are probably waving. And if you do the drape above the floor, it's going to look like your drapery is waving. So that is Drapery 101. Let me know if you guys have questions down in the comments below. I'm happy to answer. I don't know anything drapery related.